Hey guys, how you doing? This is Chef Lunatic and you are here in the kitchen as I prep my dinner for tonight, which is smothered fried pork chops and onion gravy, side of mashed potatoes and green beans. Let's get started. I will be explaining what I'm doing throughout the video and if you look below, you will see a good description of all the ingredients, times to cook. If you have any other questions, feel free to comment, share, and like, and thank you for subscribing to my channel. Now, as we start off, I have 12 pork chops that I seasoned well, and I actually over seasoned one side, and I spread it around to distribute it evenly. So I use sesong, a garlic powder, onion powder, smoked paprika, cayenne pepper, black pepper, and a little bit of Cajun seasoning. In my flour mixture, I have half cornstarch, half flour, probably about a cup each, and the same seasonings. I dip the pork chops in the flour, then I dip it into the cold water to create a nice binding agent. Then I take it and toss it back into the flour mixture. And it's gonna create this beautiful crust as it's frying. Mm -hmm. then we're gonna take that out and we are going to lay it in my cast iron pan that I have filled and it's heated up of corn oil, okay? Maybe halfway, a little half, less than half, give or take. And while that's going, I have my red and gold potatoes boiling for my mashed potatoes. I cook in chicken broth and I add a little bit of salt. I don't care about the salted water because I like actual flavor. And my whole goal is to build a flavor profile with my cooking. And you'll see that in my videos. Mm -mm -mm. Yes, yes. Dip it in, dip it in, dip it in. And look at those pork chops, the beautiful cut size. And they are bone in. If you do not like the bone, get you the boneless. It's that simple. You know what I mean? I we watch all uh, watch some cooking videos and we're like, I don't like this ingredient. Then you know what? You can omit what you do not like. You can omit what you do not like. Feel free to use it as a guide. Okay? But like I said, this method I just recently came across and I swear to God, I used to always do mustard as my binder. Never again. Never again. This is probably the best method. I even tried my fried chicken with this same method, and my chicken came out to die for. All right, we got our things going. As you can see, the potatoes have been drained. Now we're getting ready to add the flavor. So you can take a little look, take a little look. Probably should have zoomed in. I have a bulb of roasted garlic that I did. Um, about 400 degrees, 350, 400 degrees for a half hour, 45 minutes. Enough to, to get it soft where you can squeeze it out. You'll know when you feel it. <clears throat> Squeeze that all in there. Yes, yes. Because we love flavor. We love it. And I probably use about, I want to say 10 to 15 pounds of gold and red potatoes. By the way, if I haven't said it already, the ingredients and steps and instructions will be listed below. Garlic paste, we're going to add more because in this household, we, are, we love garlic. We're always going to love it. And I have to have garlic multiple ways. Roasted, minced, powder. Or paste. Love me some black pepper. Okay? Mm -hmm. And... It's about ready to flip these pork chops. Look, oh, oh my God. And you don't always have to do pork. You can always do... Get you a nice cut of chicken, like chicken breasts, chicken thighs, or chicken quarters, and do the same thing and smother them. Or you can do a steak and smother them, okay? Or you can find a different cut of meat, whichever. Or you can even go meatless. Do mushrooms <laughs> as a meat uh, option and smother in gravy. But they're just looking to die for and uh, I do believe I, I will add some milk in here. I had 2% on hand. So about a, a half a cup to a cup of milk into it. I don't like it too milky. I just need enough to add some moisture to it. And we're going to mash it old school way with the potato masher. I, I just appreciate the work. You don't have to do that. You can always, you know, use your blender or uh, immersion blender. A processor, however you decide, or whisk it until it's smooth and creamy to your liking. Remember, you're doing this for you and your family. So make the necessary uh,
and get a nice good look at the pork chops they're brown just right oh now we're getting ready to do the onion gravy so i have a little bit of the pan drippings from frying the pork chops i add some kerrygold butter about a half a stick or a quarter cup i have about two yellow onions and maybe two or three shallots sliced up you're going to saute that you just want to cook it down get it translucent and then kind of caramelize it a bit because you want to add you want to add as much flavor as possible so we're going to cook it in the oil and butter i do add a little salt and pepper melt that butter down get it nice and coated and as you can see that flour that i sat on the counter that is the flour from coating the pork chop because it has seasoning already so using plain flour and wasting flour i just sifted through that flour and add, I'll, I'll be adding that to the onions for the gravy as a thickening agent and because it has cornstarch in it it thickens even better mm -hmm. look at that yes 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 and here comes some chicken bouillon because you know what I'm saying we about that flavor it doesn't have to be chicken it could be vegetable it could be beef whichever one you like but chicken is always on hand at my house we'll put black pepper because we don't want to season too much we want everything to come together in unison and of course more garlic powder per usual you can never have too much garlic powder I promise you a little, a little bit of salt. That's probably about a couple of teaspoons. Maybe a teaspoon. At least two teaspoons. More garlic paste, of course. Mm hmm Cook it down, cook it down, cook it down, down. And my flour stir that you want it to be evenly incorporated. And then you want to add in your water. Probably about two cups right there that fits into that uh, liquid measuring glass. And as you can see, it's starting to thicken up. So I think that you always just add water as you go, just a little bit at a time, because you can't take away water. Well, you can, but it will take longer. But you can always add a little bit at a time. You want to bring that gravy to a boil, or more like to a simmer. Cook it down, because you also don't want it tasting like flour. You want to cook that flour taste out. And you see the clumps in my gravy are the result of me adding a little bit more flour into liquid doing instead of doing the opposite when to me the opposite is preferred so you do not have those bumps and lumps in there but we're going to break them down slowly but surely because i have plenty of patience in the kitchen speed it up stir 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 yes 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 okay and we're still cooking so you know it's probably about 10 15 minutes for that gravy add a little bit more water and now we're plating we have our mashed potatoes our green beans down we're putting the gravy and smothering that good old pork chop yes ma'am look at all those onions. i love a lot of onions in my onion gravy okay don't tell me it's onion gravy with no onions in it otherwise it's gravy onion flavor gravy i like lots of onions in my gravy now i'm just wiping off my beautiful plate as i garnish it and then begin to take pictures for my my page I'm about to sprinkle some parsley on, and as you can see, we have a final product. Poke chops.